If you keep up with the AI news at all, then all of the headlines you'll notice agree on one thing. Apple is behind and absolutely sucks at it. Now, normally this isn't a big issue. Apple has such a dedicated fan base that when they are behind on features, it doesn't really matter. As long as they're good and well integrated into the Apple ecosystem when they're rolled out, people are just kind of okay with that. AI is different though, because it's no longer about the consumers. It's about the investors and what they're willing to put their money into. The day-to-day -day consumer isn't super concerned about AI, but also so the day-to-day -day consumer is not what is currently driving the AI mania that we have. It's the rich investors who think that AI is the modern day gold rush. But maybe Apple can finally turn things around with this new plan. Apple plans to leave its AI woes behind with a fleet of home robots. Apple was clearly caught off guard when AI took over the technology world a few years ago. Following a series of unfulfilled promises made during the WWDC 2024 keynote, the company reportedly wants to flip the script and start releasing mobile robots, smart displays, home security cameras, and more, many of which will be powered by Apple's homegrown large language models. And a big indicator that Apple was behind in AI was the fact that they ran commercial commercials for AI related features that simply did not exist. You might remember these all starring <laughs> Bella Ramsey. There's, there's uh, like, I'm just going to mute it just in case of copyright, but apparently there's like a fish funeral going on and this guy's trying to give a speech to talk about how um, emotionally invested they were with the fish. And so Bella Ramsey pulls out her handy dandy iPhone and says, create a memory movie with just a description where they describe what they want. And then we're just going to skip to the end here and she puts it down and it does the AI creates this automatic slideshow of all the memories with the fish. You might notice that this feature does not exist. So Moving on here, another one, this kind of email summary thing where she says, oh yeah, I totally read your email, but obviously she didn't read the email. So she clicks AI summary and it gives this short summary of the email. This kind of sort of exists in some context, but not to the level that's depicted here in this commercial. Moving on, yet another feature. And remember all of these commercials were pulled after the marketing department ran them, despite the fact that I believe the technology department had not okayed them in saying that these features were actually coming. Here she asks, the Apple phone is like, hey, can you tell me who this person is? And the phone reminds her, yes, you, his name is Zach and you met him at this cafe a couple of months ago. And she's like, oh, great. And she turns around, bumps into him. And they're talking to each other. And she says, hey, Zach, of course, how could I ever forget you? Once again, that feature does not exist. All of those commercials were pulled because their features simply did not exist. So Apple was caught with their pants around their ankles and everyone looking at them saying, hey, look what OpenAI is doing. Look what Google is doing. Look what Perplexity is doing. Look what even even like Meta and Grok are doing. Where are any interesting or exciting features on iPhones that have to do with AI? And as a result of this, their stock's been suffering a little bit and people are just not very bullish on Apple being a big AI thing. However, Apple has once again come out and said, don't worry, we have it all under control. And they did this interview with Walk Bloomberg Television market. talking about their new plans to unveil a bunch of AI technology stuff and catch themselves up to the other companies. Walk us through your exclusive, what did you learn about what AI is, uh, AI, Apple is up to when it comes to AI, Mark? So the conventional wisdom is that Apple is lagging right now. Mm -hmm. It has no future. The product pipeline is you know, very limited. They're struggling in AI. The world is ending. And Tim Cook should be fired as CEO. <laughs> I think I came on here a few weeks ago yeah. to tell you that there's no way Tim Cook is, is going anywhere. And it is true that they are struggling terribly in AI. But at the end of the day, Apple is a hardware company. Uh, and they, they have been planning uh, this big new hardware pipeline. Uh, at the center of it is robotics, a push into smart home and home security, multiple new versions of Siri, and a slew of other devices from smart glasses to headsets to foldables. The centerpiece of the renewed AI hardware strategy is a tabletop robot. That's coming in 2027, sometime around then. This is a device that would sit on your desk, sit in your kitchen, sit in your living room. It would have an iPad-like display with sensors and a robotic arm. And the arm would be able to push the display around the room to follow people, to look at you, to summon you or be summoned by you, help you get work done throughout the day. The idea is to bring artificial intelligence to life in a way that hardware companies have not done so before, blending the AI with hardware manipulation and robotics. The company is also working on a HomePod with a screen for next year. Huh. This is a variation of that robotic device. This would not have the robotic arm, but would have a similar display and functionality. There's also several new versions of Siri in the works. There's a redesigned Siri, 
visually for the iPhone, the iPad, and the Mac. There's new underpinnings to that Siri. We've talked about that. Apple has signaled that. This is a revamp to Siri coming in the spring. There's also a new visual version of Siri for home devices. It uses something similar to Microsoft Clippy from 20, 30 oh, years ago, if I you remember, remember that, that virtual assistant. <laughs> yep. And then you also, I know there's a lot, I have a push into home security uh, with a new home security camera system, taps into a home doorbell as well. This would compete with Ring and Nest it's and so ADT much. and other companies and also serve as the sensors at the center of a home automation strategy. If that sounds like a lot, that's because it is. And I would argue it's simply too much. They just announced like a dozen new features that are all supposedly coming around 2027. This reads like a boardroom got together and just threw ideas out with a you know CEO saying, there are no bad ideas. Everyone just shout out what comes to your mind and we'll write it down on the board. But things like this simply take forever to build. Forget even trying to get the mass manufactured either in the United States states or overseas, just designing a new robot that has all of the AI features that this guy is talking about and having it interact with hardware on the level that he's claiming they plan to do would be an incredible feat. If this was doable as fast as Apple thinks it is, then we would already be seeing prototypes everywhere or at least leaks of them. Every AI company would be pushing these forward saying, look how amazing these are, please give us your investor money. But the fact that they're claiming that it's just two years out at most when you, we haven't even seen leaks for prototypes tells me that it's simply not going to be happening anytime soon. And I cannot, in good faith and conscience, get my hopes up about this. So Mark, you gave us a lot to think about. We have a couple yes, minutes did. left with you. We don't have a crystal ball, but we have Mark Gurman, which is the next best thing. If there is sort of a single device in here that's iPhone-like in the sense of it being the center of the universe for Apple, does one of them, does one of them stick out to you as that? I don't think the iPhone in the next five to 10 years is going to go away as the center of the universe. What I do think is going to happen uh, is the next generation of ecosystems, you know, instead of being built around the phone and the cloud, it's going to be built around AI. So all the devices, right, including the phone, are going to get demoted a bit, and AI is going to become the center of the universe. And so you're going to have your phone, your home devices, your earbuds. Uh, your glasses, your watch, your computer, et cetera. And those are all going to be built around AI as the center, moving away from the phone and the cloud as the center. So just for a second, I want to ignore whether or not consumers actually actively want this. I simply fail to see how it could be profitable because AI is very expensive. And not only is it expensive to build, it's also expensive to maintain. It is a continuous, constant, ongoing commitment towards paying for server space to do all the calculations required to run AI. And that's why no AI company has ever turned a profit. It's lost hundreds of billions of dollars. So as the way I see it, you have three options. One is to make it a subscription service. Two is to make iPhones more expensive. And then you're just baking in the cost of the AI over however many years the average iPhone lasts. And three is to use it for advertising purposes and keep it free like we have with Google. And I'll be honest, I don't know if I see the average consumer shelling out for yet another subscription when it's not absolutely essential to day-to-day -day life. Like a cell phone that I pay a subscription for is central to my life. The internet that I pay a subscription for center to my life. AI, if I have to pay a subscription for it, it would need to be central to my life. And I don't see a world right now where that's the case. The prototype's all ready to go. They're getting up the assembly lines and they're going to hit the stores, right? They're all ready to go yep. or not yet. She's asking the question we're all thinking like, oh, 2027. Well, they must already be making them right now, right? Right, Apple? In terms of these devices, everything that I'm talking about <laughs> today, those are uh, mostly forward looking. We're talking uh -huh. about things coming uh -huh. out 26, 27. Uh, there's a mention uh, in the story of a robotic arm for retail stores and manufacturing. That's probably five seven, to seven years away. So we're talking 2030s there. I mentioned the foldable iPad Mac device. That's going to be at the end of this decade. The foldable iPhone is going to be at the end of next year. This year in September, uh, a little less than a month from now, Apple's going to introduce its first redesigned iPhone uh, in several years. This is the iPhone 17 line, also the slimmed down iPhone, new AirPods, a new Apple Watch Ultra with a slightly larger display and satellite connectivity for hikers. So uh, in the near term, some good stuff in the long term, some much cooler stuff. And he keeps saying it, but it's all just one big trust me, bro. This reeks of a Hail Mary attempt to not look like you're falling behind by promising a bunch of stuff that more than likely isn't even really in the works in any significant capacity. It's giving desperation. You know, this, the hardware that you've highlighted is nothing without the software 
Mark, mm -hmm. and you've documented the struggles that, AI, that Apple has had when it comes to its own work with AI software, talking about potential acquisitions. Can Apple pull off this hardware with the way the software uh, is now? Yes, so as I mentioned no. in the story, they're looking at two- The software to interact with the hardware doesn't exist if the hardware doesn't exist. That's just how it works. You can't build software for hardware that you haven't built yet. Directions for revamping the underpinnings of Siri. One is called Linwood and one is called Glenwood. Linwood is using upgraded versions of the company's own internal foundation models. That's the team that Meta has been poaching a bunch of people from, including the head of the team. We talked about this a few weeks ago. Glenwood is using a third party provider to rebuild Siri. So building Siri around models from a third party. And obviously third parties like Anthropic, like OpenAI, like Google, they've proven out their models. They work extraordinarily well. And so Apple's backup plan essentially is to go external till they're able to get their internal models up to snuff. And honestly, mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense. Even if they do go external, either by partnering with another AI company or by buying out another AI company, it still takes time to build software to integrate with hardware that does not exist yet. I have no doubt, to be clear, that it is possible, but I also have no doubt that, that we're not going to be seeing it in two years. And when I start looking at these specific things that they're offering, there's this list here by CNET, I realize that most of them seem to fall into two main categories. The first is stuff that people might not even want, and the second is stuff people already have, and so they might not be interested in buying a new one. Tabletop robot is the first thing he talked about. According to Bloomberg, at the center of the plan is a tabletop robot, reportedly coming in 2027, that is up for debate. Bloomberg and CNET have both reported on this plan before. At this time, the company reportedly had two concepts in mind, a robot that can move uh, around the home and a tabletop robotic device. Now, Bloomberg says the robot will, quote, feature a lifelike version of Siri and the ability to engage with users throughout the day. It reportedly resembles an iPad mounted on a movable limb that can reposition itself to face you. Former CNET editor Lisa Somebody wrote in 2024 that, quote, perhaps the biggest challenge when it comes to a robot uh, in the home is that the market is unproven. We've all seen the robot made Rosie on the old Jetsons cartoons. We have not, I'm Gen Z. But do we really want or need a robotic helper in our homes? And my thought of to this is that we kind of already have this. It's a, an iPad-like feature on a frame that communicates with you throughout the day. I mean, isn't that just a smartphone? This is the same issue that the R1 Rabbit had. You can see R1 Review and everyone is just absolutely trashing it, even in the titles because of how bad it was. They took something that should have existed as just software and for some reason forced it into a hardware that they had custom built for it. And it seems like Apple is doing the same thing with a tabletop robot. An iPad-like device that communicates with you throughout the day is just an iPhone. The second thing is this smart home display. Another item Apple is reportedly working on is essentially a smart speaker with a screen. Bloomberg calls this a stripped down version of the robot. It won't have a robotic arm or conversational Siri, but it should be able to do things such as music playback, note taking, control home devices, and video conferencing. Bloomberg says it will run a new operating system called Charismatic. And this might have some use in specific scenarios, but smart speakers have existed for forever. It can do things like play music. Smart speakers can do that note taking. I mean, you can already use Google Homes to remind me of stuff. Control home devices already exists and video conferencing, which might be the only interesting new unique feature that's attached to it. But I can also just video conference from my phone. This is not anything especially exciting. It's being touted like some new thing, but it's basically just some old ones repackaged. It's like when the latest Tesla comes out. It's not that it's bad. It's that I don't know if I need it. The last thing is the home security cameras. Home security cameras are becoming more and more popular and Apple wants to move in into that realm as well. Totally makes sense. The company will make cameras that anchor into an Apple security system, the report said. And this is the only one that I look at it and think, yeah, that could work pretty well. It's an industry that already exists, that's proven really well with lots of large competitors. Think Ring, Nest, Google, Amazon, although I think they own Ring and Nest respectively, and then like ADP and a bunch of third-party providers. But ironically, home security cameras and the home security systems don't really require AI. They run really well without so it. So the one big one that I'm convinced could push really well for Apple and actually put them more on the map when it comes to this kind of thing, I don't think would even particularly benefit from AI. So after this big announcement that came out, the question becomes, do people think that Apple can actually do it? Can Apple convince people that they're going to pull it off and catch up with AI? And to answer that question, we have Dan Ives, who did an interview with Bloomberg Technology. Mark's reporting moves the needle, right? We know that this tabletop robot will be the centerpiece on the hardware side. We know that Siri will be made more lifelike. Has this changed things for you, Dan, 
in what you're modeling for Apple and the kind of comeback that many think that Apple needs to have in the AI domain? Look, I mean, their AI strategy has been a disaster. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's if you look at every other big tech company, you know, Apple is massively behind. And I think when you look at this as a potential opportunity, I think Street has basically shrugged the shoulders. I mean, robotics, Apple's going to come out with another device. Look, look at OpenAI. Look at Microsoft. Look at Meta. Mm -hmm. I mean, it speaks to our view. Right now, it's an F1 race in Monza. It's all passing there by. And Apple and Cook are watching from a park bench drinking a cappuccino. That's actually a really interesting. I think maybe Vail Dan referenced the WWDC, which opened up with the F1 uh, sequence, if you remember. Then that puts the, the emphasis back on Siri. What, how much better does Siri need to be then? If it is to be a tool used daily by technology users around so the world in the better. same way that ChatGPT is an app on my iPhone. Look, let's just call it like it is. Like, Siri, nothing's going to happen internally. I mean, internally, this has been a disaster, right? If you mm -hmm. go back to WWDC, it felt like uh, Michael J. Fox Back to the Future moment, 2016. They continue to promise what's on the come, what's next. They're going to have to do an acquisition. I mean, look, it's just it's the reality of the situation. It's not happening internally. And, and there's no one on the street that believes any innovation is coming out of Apple when it comes to AI organically. And that's the big issue. If you want AI features, then you just go somewhere else. And if you're an investor that wants to invest in companies that are at the forefront of AI and pushing that really far forward because you think there's a lot of money in it, then you also go somewhere else. For neither of those two things, both on the consumer side of wanting AI and on the investor side of wanting to invest in AI, do you go to Apple? They're being left behind in this instance. Dan, you still got an outperform and a $270 price target on Apple. You're sounding way more cautious than your money perspective is leading us. Yeah, look, to get to 270 is no AI. This is a stock that's going to move higher and even saw what happened last week with the tariffs. Cook obviously playing nice in the sandbox with Trump. That was a huge relief and the stocks had to move. And I think there's a stock that could go to 270 or potentially 280 without AI. But for this to be a 350, 400, $450 stock, it's AI. And it's not happening internally. And, and I think that's the problem that the street has is that things like robotics, next gen, a three thousand hour device, the four thousand dollar. It's all about software. And, and, it and I hadn't even really considered that talking about the price. Something like a AI personal assistant with a screen is probably going to be priced similar to the Apple headset, which was like three or four thousand dollars. And I'm not sure most people are willing to fork over that kind of money on speculation just yet, because the Apple headset, whatever it was called, was pretty much an objective failure. Tim Cook all but admitted that nobody wanted them. Nobody was purchasing them. It was priced too high and it wasn't good enough and it was all based on speculation and market hype that simply did not exist. I can't imagine a world in which these new features or robotics features that they're talking about are much different from that, especially since we've seen other AI hardware features fail, like the robot R1 and then whatever that uh, pin thing was that looked kind of like Star Trek badges. It comes down to like they need to essentially, and we've talked about perplexity, other acquisitions are going to have to do. It's not happening internally. That's just the reality. What's interesting, Dan, is the notes you have been putting out, for example, today, have been more around, as you just said, there was a relief when Tim Cook was alongside President Trump last week. Well, this week, it's all been about what President Trump has meant for NVIDIA and for AMD and for paying to play. What do you make of the moves that we've seen and to gain access in China? Look, it speaks to, I mean, you know, a godfather quote, right? I mean, it's a deal you can't refuse. And I think the reality is, is that Big tech CEOs are learning the new rules of the game. Now, of course, it's led godfather of AI, Jensen, NVIDIA. They need to do, look, 15%, yeah. it's breadcrumbs relative to getting into a China market. They can't give this to Huawei in a silver platter. And I view it as bullish, and it's going to put more fuel in the engine of this AI rally. Now, after this, they go on to discuss other companies, but these developments around Apple and their AI plans are definitely going to be something to watch. There is absolute probability that I end up wrong and Apple comes out with some amazing hardware with great AI integration that everybody absolutely loves. But as it stands right now, I think Apple is overpromising and setting themselves up to underdeliver. Thanks for watching.